All right, so here we, here we go. So today we are going to go over what you can do, what are called methods with lists or commands with lists. So let's do a little bit of a review and then we'll go on to uh, this part of our book. So how do I create a list, Caleb? Just a blank empty list. Uh, just do like list one equals then in like a friends here and like a like these? Like, no, like the box. Like these. Yeah. Like Brackets. Like Correct. Bracket. Excuse me. How do I make the first object? Actually, that won't work. So let me. How do I create an object, or how do I create a list with eight zeros in it, starting like this? Van. Um. Just. Uh, open bracket. Zero comma zero comma zero. I don't want to do that. It's too long. Oh, okay. Uh, Matt. Do it, uh, multiplication symbol, and then eight. Yep. So now list one has eight zeros in it. How do I make the fifth object my name? Someone else. Do I need to get the random name picker out again? Yes, Carter, you you're welcome to guess. Is it list one equals wait, no. Is it Could you random thing? In bracket, it's like five, and then it's like equals Zach. I don't. I think I might have messed up the order. Hang on, say it again. List one. List one. In parentheses, in parentheses five. Like or this. Not, sorry, bracket. Bracket. Bracket five. Then what? Equals Zach. <laughs> you you got it, but you you didn't get it. <laughs> the fifth object oh. is what index? Hang on, single I name. Forgot, I forgot about that. I forgot about oh, that. You four. It's four. It's four. It's four. Yeah. All right. I forgot about the zero. Yeah. So this needs to be not just the H, but list four. Okay. Uh, if I don't know how long a list is, how do I make sure that the last, that the very end of it, what is the index of the last object? You guys don't need to pull your hands up. I have my random selector. So, Christine, how do if I don't know the length of the list or how how many items are in it, how do how do I change the last object, the last element in the list? No clue. Let's see. Well, if I want the last thing in this list to be my name, how do I do that? Um, you would position it. So, like, where it says list four, it says four. You put, you put it in like six. I so. could, but if I don't know how long a list is, how do I make sure that the last one. Oh, so negative one. Say what? Negative one. Yep. Now, let's see what else. I want to delete this zero, Libby. How do I do that? Delete, like D-E-L, um, and then list one bracket six. Good job. Um, done that. Wait, uh, yes. I have a question from yesterday. What does the list like module do? Um, so if I have, it makes a list out of whatever's in the parentheses. Okay. So. Yeah. Why would we, would we ever use the list? Like, would we say like if, like. If he did more than he was spelled with that certain thing to get, like what would be the use of deleting a list? Because it's like, it's uh, a you, code that you could just take it out. Isn't it just being the 
like when we when we kill the badger, we have to delete their we have to delete their position so we don't blit a uh, badger there. So it doesn't like stay there dead or something. No, you could could you do that? Yeah, but that's gonna add code and it's lame. Like that's gonna be a while. You'll have you would have to have. So what we're going to do in our game. So currently, our game only has two, two things for our bad guys. It's got an X and a Y position. We have an X and Y position, and we've messed with these things. We can add a, another variable that could be an image, right? So we're going to blit the image in this bad guy's code which can be different from this guy, which can be different from that guy. So you can have different types of enemies. And all you need to do is add just a few variables and have one or two lines of code and boom, you could have a badger and you can have a squirrel and you can have a gopher. And you can have each one of those pop up individually and you can have it randomized. You can figure out, you know, badgers are gonna appear 80% of the time, squirrels 15 and gophers five. All right, so you can just add to these things, uh, and we'll get to that in our actual game, but for now, um, that's how these work. And then once they're dead, you delete all of this so that the bad guy's no longer on screen. If you wanted to have them stay and just like, um, you may have to put like, what I would probably do is have a list of dead badgers and that not be the most efficient, but a list of dead badgers, and you just have the X Y position of the badger, and you just blit the dead badger image at that spot. So you take it out of this list and put it in a new list, or yeah, or you could have like a true false variable in here, like, like if it's dead, blit this here. If it's not, blit this stuff and have it move. So we'll get we'll get to complicating that. JD. Yeah. All right. Do you guys have questions? Oh, Libby. If you're trying to show a specific index, can you put multiple within the same bracket? Or do you have to do different ones in each bracket? Uh, you can slice a list. So you could do list one. So you're talking about like you want to do list one, two, and three. Like you want the first, second, and third objects in the list to come out yeah yeah that would be list slicing so we would do list one and if you want the first three items you would just do uh, colon three and the colon normally you have a number here right you have a start colon and end if you don't have a start it assumes the very beginning of the list so if you don't put a starting point it defaults to zero if you don't put an ending point, it defaults to the end. So you could actually just go, if you have list colon like that, it's the whole list because it starts at the beginning and it ends at the end because we haven't given it a defined place to stop. But to do what you're saying is we would do colon three and that will give us the first three items. It'll give us index zero, one, two, which is three items, but it won't give us index three. It's just like range where we go from A to B minus one. So just keep that in mind with quizzes and stuff. Um, it's a little bit of a, oh great, it's the copier guy. Are you good? Okay, he's good. I called him this morning to fix a copier and normally he checks in with one of us, but he's not, but this, uh, the other guy's gone. Okay, so working with lists. Boop, boop, boop. All right, so we can do that, that's lame. Uh, Okay, so working with lists, we're going to go through the book, and so if you guys have your book, follow along. If you don't have your book, find it online. Um, basically, what we're going to do is if we, oh, yes, yes, I'll share with him then. Yeah, if you guys rely on the online book, you'll want to like save the web page to your computer or something like that, or get PDF versions of. Nice catch there, Micaiah. Um, so it is page eighty-four. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of figure out the utility of using lists and whatnot. We don't necessarily want to display uh, this guy's cat names or whatever. Um, so we could do name one is Felix. Name two is Kielberg. what? Kielberg. What? Kielberg. <laughs> I don't under I don't know if I want to do Gilbert. Do Gilbert. No name four is Dilbert. I would name a cat like Whisker. Whis. My mom had a cat named Patches growing up. Whisker, Whisker. That's a cute name. Name four, two, three, four, three. <laughs> okay, so seven names. Now, <clears throat> I could do that and create it. I could do <coughs> and do input cat name one. This is kind of lame, isn't it? No, I'm just following along in the book. Do you have I do not. I don't. I don't dislike cats. I just don't ever really want one. I like dogs. I like cats. So, I mean, I'm going through the book, so you guys should be at least bare minimum, bare minimum looking at the book. And if you don't have the book, then you should probably be copying the code. One of the two. But it's not going to be in the same resource as all that. It is, yeah, but that doesn't... Watching. What? Watching. Listen, you guys study it however you guys want. I provide the resources. If you guys study by watching, if you guys study by following along, if you guys... I'm just saying, I'm just saying... <laughs> I'm not forcing you guys to take notes. It's which, yeah, anyway. So this is really kind of annoying. I don't necessarily want to always have to, well, what if they don't have seven cat names? What if they don't have seven cats? Who here owns a cat? I used to. Oh, I used to. Van, how many cats do you own? Uh, eight. Eight? No, okay. I'm <laughs> what? So he only has one cat, but I'm writing code assuming there's eight, right? How, how do I know how many cats he has? I can't unless I use a loop. And if I use a loop, how do I store those names other than in one long string like you did with our database? This is where lists come in handy, right? Because again, I don't, I don't know how many cats he has. I don't want to force them to use these, these names. I want to give them the ability to write their own, but I don't know how many cats they have. So what we do is... We could that then we would do print you know name one and all and it just be lame we don't want to do that so what we're actually going to do is we're going to start with a blank a blank list okay everyone following me okay so we start with a blank list and now what we're going to do this guy uses a while true so we'll just copy the book for now while true we are going to print, enter the name of a cat. Cat, now you guys, this should be, you guys should be familiar with what I'm about to do. STR length cat names plus one plus or enter nothing to stop. Now let's take a look at this code and see. Oh, hang on. I must have missed. So when you put brackets for like the names at the top, like the cat names, does that mean you're going to make it a list? So you're trying to put like yeah. the computer that you're going to make that a list? Yes, this is an empty list. Okay. Right? You can kind of think of it as like if that's going to be someone's age, 
Age is zero. It's just starting with nothing, zero, blank, empty, whatever. Yes, Matthew. Did you mean to put a parenthesis before or? And if you did, you should probably put an end. Oh, I did, yes, thank you. And Kay. also space. <laughs> Sorry. But I don't need the space. This isn't an input. Oh, it's not? No. Oh, never mind. So what this is doing, again, Sorry, what this is, no, you're fine. It means you're paying attention. What this is doing is saying, enter the name of a cat, enter the name of cat, instead of cat number one, two, three. Again, I don't know how many cats are in the list right now. Right now, the first time we go through this, what's the length of cat names? Zero. Zero, what's zero plus one? One, so please enter the name of cat one. So the first cat I enter in is going to be cat number one. If I then go, oh wait, hang on, this should be, that should be there, there we go. So it's the length of cat names is gonna start off at zero and then we're gonna add one. We add a name to the list, then it's going to start over cat name after we add one name after we add one cat name to the list, what is the length of cat name? Cat names. One. What's one plus two? Two. Three. Well, one plus one. Wait, what, what did I say? You said one, one plus, plus two. two. One plus I did not mean to say it. What's one plus one? Two. Two. So then that's going to be enter the name of cat two. Or push nothing to stop. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go name. equals input when do you get to append oh all right whatever name is input so that's where we enter in our cat name how do we if they enter into nothing how do we stop the loop break but what is the if statement that we need to create oh, oh hang on hang on exit. hang on exit. Van. Uh, what do we need to do? What? Yeah. So if they enter in nothing to stop, how do we code oh, that? We do if name equals and then empty string. Yep. And then, then everyone else said break. break. Yep. That's perfect. Can you also do exit or no? Not Ness. Uh, Ness, yo. You know? Yeah, you could do it. I mean, it's Ness and yo. It's not yes, it's not no, but it's kind of in the middle. Exit just kind of exits everything. It doesn't just stop the code. It exits out of Python. So it like, literally like, makes them leave. Like... Yeah. Oh, so so break, break just makes them like, okay, we're done. Yeah. So it make statement. Yeah. Cat names equals cat names plus name. What is that line doing? Hang on, let me select someone. Yeah. Caleb. Is it defined cat names? Cat names is already defined. Okay, so then. So it's telling me. Cat names is cat names. Cat names. So it's saying cat name plus like a blank space. Not a blank like space. What they, what they entered? What they entered in, yeah. Okay. So it's basically, it's concatenate, concatenating two lists together to make a new one. Concatenating is uh, putting together. It's not adding, because in Python, adding is with numbers. Concatenating is with non-number things that you put together. Sorry. Yes. It's a fancy word for adding, van. Um, did you also uh, do cat names plus <laughs> equals name? Yep. You could also do, and I'll put that cat names plus equal name. You can do that as well. Question? Yes. So why do why is there a len? Like why do you have len before cat names? Because what that does is that gets the length of cat names and then adds one to it. Okay. And what that will do is it will display enter cat number one, cat number two, cat number three, cat number four. So isn't that counting like all the letters in cat names? It's not counting all the letters in cat names. No, it's counting the things in cat names because so cat just, names is a list. So it's just one of them? So it's, well, how many things are in this list right here? Zero. Okay. And then after we add one name, so if we have, you know, let's just go Lucy, how many items are in that? No. One. Yes. Because it's one element in that list. 
that element is made up of four letters. That's correct. But if you don't differentiate, if you just have a list in the length function, it just counts how many things are in that list. So what if you just put what, how many elements? What if you just put Lucy without putting? It would give you four. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we got that, and now we're done with that, and so we're gonna print the cat names are. Oopsies, that looks pretty not good. <laughs> then for name in cat names, now this is the first thing for loops with a loop, or for loops with a list. Do one, two, three, do plus, plus name. So when we run this, this is lists and loops, student folders. <laughs> All right, let's go. Josh B, give me cat name. You. Uh, Camden. Cat name. <laughs> Carter. Cat name. Um. Uh. Jeff. Oh wait, hang on. This is. <laughs> Jeff Rook. <laughs> Let's start over. All right, there we go. So bagel. And so the name of cat two mittens. And then what was the next one? Jeff. Is it like this or with the G? No, Jeff. 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 Jeff is not spelled with the G. Jeff. Luke. Cat name. Yeah, it's supposed to be like That's G. Yeah. Your name is G. Yeah, I need a cat name. Oh, Angela. Oh, Angela. And one more. Who's the last person? Katan. Rohan. <laughs> All right, so now when we enter nothing, it stops. So the cat names are Bagel, Mittens, Jeff, Angelo, Rohan. So it took a little longer to write this, right? I could have just done this. It took a little bit more time to write this, but which is the more functional, efficient, better code? The second one, obviously, because that's what we're learning about. We're learning about lists. I would hope the code that involves lists is more efficient. Um, do you guys have questions on how this worked? You questions on what this line does? How do we add a list to a list to then have that list be the old list plus the new list? Like, huh? Is it just that single line of code that that's how that works? Yeah, so this takes cat names, which originally is nothing. When we typed in, what was the first one? Wasn't bagel. It? Bagel. Bagel. bagel? It was bagel. So we have z we have blank plus bagel equals cat names. So then cat names is just bagel. And then we loop through again. And we're at mittens. Cat names. The new cat names equals the old cat names, which is bagel plus mittens. So now new cat names is bagel and bagel comma mittens. So that's how we build our list. Um, what? Go ahead. Uh, for the for name and cat name, does Here. name have to be that variable? Nope. Okay. That's sh again for x in range ten. Print x gives you zero through nine. I could also do for Kilimanjaro in range ten. Print Kilimanjaro, and you still get the exact same answer. Okay. It's just whatever this is, that variable becomes the elements in that list. Yes. So is there a reason why you have to print and then you have the name equals the print? Like could you merge that from underneath the, the oh, yeah. name? Oh, no. here. Can you say that again? No. Where there's the list, see why you have like print and then all your stuff will have to happen. You don't have it like in the input. You have it like from the print. The oh, here. Yeah. 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 Like, could you put it in the input? Of course. Yeah. Oh, okay. Why didn't you? Because the book didn't. And it's a little easier to understand. So 
it, it's just like okay i read this and then i have it's just my input it's you could very easily just go Shouldn't. And then we. It just, the difference is aesthetics, essentially, how it looks. Oh, yeah. So. Libby. Since it's just a print, and then, how does the computer know that that's what is the input? that this is the input. So what it does is that the code executes this line of code, right, displays it, and then input, it pauses. It waits, it won't do anything until you hit the enter button. Anything else you type, essentially, it becomes that input. We just don't have, you could put here, You don't, oh, no, you have to define the input. You don't have to have a prompt. Okay. So, because we use that print statement above as the prompt. And then they're just, you know, people have been around computers long enough to know that if there's a prompt and then you see something flashing, if you type it in, that's, that's where it goes typically. All right. So, any questions? Um. Yes. How does the code like how does the code know to print all of the chat names after the code um breaks when we don't type anything? Here? Yeah. How does it know to print the name? Yeah. That's what we're about to go over. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna jump over to the shell for a minute. For X in range five print x x becomes the items in whatever this is right that thing whatever follows in has to be iterable iterable means essentially can it go through it what do you mean can it go through it Range five is made up of what numbers? Zero through, zero through four. Is there more than one thing that goes into range five? All right, we have zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, if I have is that one string? Is is hello world one string? Are there things that make that string up? Yeah. Right? Hey, H E L L O at space W O R L D. So those are, that is something that's iterable because it's made up of something smaller. So when we do that, we get hello world. Now, what makes up 10? But. Can I take one away and still have it be like 10? No. No. An integer or a float is not iterable because it's not made up of smaller parts, right? 10 is 10. I can't, can I cut it in half by, you know, 10 divided by two? Yes, but that's, that doesn't count, right? That's not necessarily what makes up 10. 10 is a si single solitary integer nothing else. So that's why when we do this, we get an error. Int object is not iterable, meaning integers are not made up of smaller things that can be broken down and looped through. However, um, uh, Whiskers was another one. Oh, whatever. 
We're keeping it. Now, cat names is one list, correct? Yeah. Is are there things that make up that list? Yeah. How many? One. Wait, only five. Five fins, <laughs> right? Because I have one, two, three, four, five. So I can use a for loop. So for I can do x in. Now it's not range list. It's just cat names. <coughs> print x because cat names is made up of five different things it will print those five different things I would recommend not using x I would do like the book says print name so that you know what it is but you still get those five lists or those five elements does that make sense All right for loop should be pretty pretty easily understood at this point. So if you don't understand for loops, you don't understand how that works, you need to talk to me after class or see me after school or something like that. Because for loops, we are going to use the rest of the semester. We're going to use it in advanced class. For and while loops are crazy important. So if you thought they were going to die in chapter two and three, <laughs> no. You got to get used to them. You got to be familiar and you got to be comfortable with loops. Do you guys have questions on how this for loop works? Like why name becomes the individual, you know, what is name? Why does name do that? Any questions? No? Okay. So this is going to be, This is going to be an extension of after. So after this, we are going. I'll hand back the quizzes. What is x equal in that line of code? What is y equal? Okay. X y. Right. The multiple assignment trick is something we learned uh, when we started building our game. As long as the number of variables on the left side is the same as the number of values on the right side, you're a okay. So what we can do is we can say we can have a list of cat features. So our cat one is fat, black, and loud. Right? Not the greatest cat in the world, but mainly it's because of that loud. Like a loud cat. Um, so what you can then do is you can take an assignment, you can assign a variable, size equals cat. Now, what index should I do for size of the cat? Zero, correct. Uh, color is what? One. And disposition <laughs> is cat what? Three? Two, Two good job. All right. So I took three lines of code to do that. It's kind of kind of kind of annoying. I don't want to have to do that, Caleb. So for size equals cat zero, can you also do size equals cat then just bracket size zero with it? No. You have to put zero in it. Yeah. If you have, you can't just have brackets following the list. There has to be something in the brackets. Okay. Uh, but what we can do is we could do size, color, disposition equals cat. So cat, how many things, how many elements are in cat? Three elements. How many variables do we have on the left side? So that's an easy way to assign, you know, if you're doing something with students and you're trying to keep track of a student name, age, height, and grade, instead of spending four lines doing name is student zero, class is student one, you could just have these four variables on the left side equals the student. Does that make sense? Okay, any questions? All right, that's that's it for today. One thing I want you guys to look over, it's a, um, like a page, it should take you like three or four minutes to read it. It's work, it's going off of running totals. So just the next section, augmented assignment operators, just go through that, make sure you're brushed up on that for class, because on Monday, I'll briefly go over it.
But then we're going to get into methods, and that's how you can actually edit and change and move lists around and do a bunch of cool stuff. So.